I felt very natural come home. I like that. That's good. And I feel at home. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the staff, the National Party, for such a wonderful event. Um, and thank you for inviting me here. Thank all of you for coming. I also want to quickly thank my state party chair, uh, Aaron Marksdale, for the great work he does in Mississippi. And finally, Mario Barnes, who helped coordinate my trip here. Um, yeah. As you all know, we're at a watershed moment in the Libertarian Party. You can look around and you see the exposure is now here. It's exposure that we, we've not seen before. Your hard work and dedication and perseverance is finally paying off. Where once we did not have a platform to speak from, now I wake up in my hotel room this morning and I see one of our presidential candidates on CNN, something that I've never seen. Times are changing. You can feel it, I can feel it, and very soon those who have sought comfort, comfort in the two-party system will painfully feel it. The party is growing, but we're nowhere close to the pinnacle. The possibility to have a significant impact on American politics lies directly in front of us, and it's incumbent on the party leaders, members, and activists to capitalize on a historic opportunity. An opportunity that once was not possible is now in our reach. Now's the time to take it to the next level. It's happening at light speed, and we must be ready for the increasing spotlight responsibility. Americans have finally grown weary of the failures, broken promises, and the incompetence of the major two parties. They look at both Democrats and Republicans and they realize they are cut from the same self-serving fabric that resembles nothing that our founding fathers envisioned. The ideas and principles that were once present in the spirit of our nation's founding are long gone and even the remnants are at the risk of extinction. Both Democrats and Republicans are proving every day that more government is simply not the answer. We look to D.C. and we see a government that's dictating every aspect of our personal lives. They're rallying our country and our generations that, that, that will come after us with a $20 trillion debt. Democrats are speeding to a fiscal cliff at 100 miles an hour, while Republicans are gladly boasting about approaching the same cliff at 90 miles an hour. At some point, someone has to slam on the brakes. The Libertarian Party appears to be the only viable option, and finally, many are starting to realize this. With all this said, we cannot accomplish a single thing we do not grow in numbers as a party. Our collective principles and ideas appeal to most, at least on some level. Unlike the other two parties, our principles are what binds us together, versus a mere party name which is essentially nothing more than a team jersey that has no credibility and the player wearing it is void of any consistent set of convictions. As the stars align, we see once a seemingly impossible task such as growing our party exponentially as an endeavor that is well within the realm of possibility. The question now becomes, how do we make this a possibility into a reality? The best way I can explain it is to simply tell you about my journey from being a rank and file, rank and file GOP loyalist to become a libertarian candidate for the U.S. Congress and also speaking to you today. In my eyes, it had a lot to do with my life experiences, with the people involved in my personal enlightenment, but most importantly, the framing of a message. In 2008, I was fresh off a four-year tour in the United States Marine Corps and also deployed in Iraq. I was a young, proud 22-year-old that knew everything about the world had it figured out, specifically the political world. I began my freshman year at the University of Southern Mississippi as a political science major. And it was by chance that I encountered a man that at the time seemed a little bit crazy. He kept rattling off these ideas that I somewhat agreed with, but was certainly not realistic. Danny Benwell is actually in the audience tonight. Y'all look, Danny, raise your hand. There he is. Danny is a former Mississippi Party chair, if you don't know, but also is a U.S. Congressional candidate. He frequently traveled the state, speaking about the true meaning of freedom and liberty. Whenever his travels brought him to my hometown of Addisburg, Mississippi, I'd receive a phone call asking him to go snag a bite at our local chilies. It was these conversations that planted the seeds that would eventually grow into my understanding of what it means to truly be free. I was guaranteed, it was guaranteed that after each one of these encounters, 
I would get in my car, I'd watch Danny drive off, and then the personal conversation with myself would begin. I'd always have to tell myself, he's wrong. I don't quite know how he's wrong, but damn it, he's wrong. After a few of these lunches, my, my interest was piqued. I was not yet convinced, but I was thinking. I had to know more about these radical notions that he kept speaking about, so I became, began to delve into the readings that he would recommend to me. These readings were my quintessential aha moments. It took years for me to come full circle. There was one thing Danny did that I look back on and I identify as the sole reason I allowed myself to open up to these ideas that he was trying to show me. It was the method in which he framed the message, both in words and delivery. For those who may not be familiar with that term, framing a message, in political science it refers to the manner in which you convey your intended points to others so they can understand through a generally agreeable discourse. Being a Southern Baptist, I compare this to witnessing the gospel. In my experiences, I found that those who are most effective in bringing someone to the Word of God are those who do not constantly beat others over the head with the Bible, but they instead, thank you. instead they simply highlight the wonders of the ideas that are present. Just cause us intrigued and a need to know more. Danny gave me just enough of the liberty-oriented ideas to make me want more. I have no doubt if you had aggressively forced them on me, I would have certainly pushed back, and that would have been the extent of the conversation. Years later, I brought this up to him, and he explained to me, Rick, if you force honey down a newborn child's throat, the child will hate it. But if you put a little bit on his lip, he'll grow to love it. And he said, this is exactly how you spread the message of freedom and liberty. We're so far removed from the ideas of freedom right now that they may seem foreign and unrealistic to some people. The process of getting them to open up can be very difficult, but if done right, it's possible. Being from South Mississippi, I sometimes encounter those that I'm at odds with on certain issues. I found that framing the message as far as the words that are spoken can be the deciding factor in convincing someone to be receptive to your ideas. This may involve setting certain parameters in which you're speaking in. Since I'm from Mississippi, many of my fellow Mississippians identify as conservative. I inform them that I use the term in the purest sense, and I define conservative as a conservative application of government to my life. This sets a tone for what can turn out to be a very interesting conversation on many issues, but specifically social issues. You can see the personal dilemma and the cognitive dis dissonance begin in their own minds as they realize that using the government to control someone else's personal habits, like the war on drugs, is not conservative, yet it's liberal. The main one I've encountered is one I'm sure we all have, and it pertains to the non-aggression principle. As I was explaining exactly what it meant the other day in, a, in an interview, the guy posed this question to me. If you support the idea of allowing individuals to make their own decisions, where does the individual draw the line? I informed him that he was just simply asking the wrong question. If we allow the government to make those decisions for us, where will the government draw the line? <laughs> Most people, if they're honest with themselves, they understand how that scenario ends. And regardless of their ideology, their party persuasion, it is not something they're comfortable with. At that moment, you have found a common ground to build on. If we do not frame the libertarian message properly, we run the risk of falling in the same trap the two major parties where emotion guides their beliefs instead of reason and logic, which should be the compass. <laughs> on, the surface, our, on the surface, our message may not appeal to everyone. What makes sense to us may appear to be unreasonable to others. At this point, we might as well be speaking an entirely different language. Our intent is then lost in translation to those who view freedom and liberty through the lens in which contemporary American politics has provided them. That is why something as simple as how you word a sentence can be the determining factor in any political discourse about libertarian beliefs. This can be thought-provoking for you as well. It can force you to approach issues from different angles and may also provide you with a deeper understanding of the topic at hand. Once again, these are exciting yet troubling times in American politics. Millions of Americans are fleeing their own parties. 
They're looking for something not just fresh, not just new, but something that may actually work. As they're leaving their parties, let us make sure that we do not build a wall around our own party that even to make a certain Mr. Trump happy and proud. Instead, let us embrace the fact that the Libertarian Party can be, a fanta be in a fanta fantastic position to those who feel so disenfranchised by both Republicans and Democrats to come. This will only increase our strength. Just remember what a once great American hero said as he had just defeated an evil socialist status in the Soviet Union in a highly contested and epic battle at the end of the movie Rocky IV. Rocky stands in the middle of the ring and he tells the crowd, if I can change, you can change, we all can change. And yes, I just quoted Rocky Balboa. <laughs> It doesn't get more American than that. But the statement holds true as we prepare to take on these new members. If we all can make the necessary changes, the Libertarian Party will charge forward and reach places we've never seen before. But most importantly, we stand a chance to preserve a republic and resurrect the ideas of freedom and liberty. And for that, I do believe that history will judge us with an undeniable sense of honor. Thank you.